everyone, it's Greg Tatum again. I'm going to talk this time about how I've done some of this quad subdivision here. Um, and I've made this creepy mask with these green reflective colors. And I'm going to dive into a little bit about how that was generated. Um, and I'm using a framework called Regal. And starting in, you can see I have this. Um, I'm requiring this mask file, passing in regal, and I get back two things. I get back um, a function to draw the mask, and then the kind of mesh that defines the geometry here. Uh, and then draw a mask is just given the assets, which is the just includes the uh, um, a texture. And then I draw the mask body, draw the background, and then um, I have some debug information here. If I set it to true. Um, it'll draw, I'm actually drawing the body here, let's change it from the mask body to the mask quads. Um, so that'll actually do some debug information about our, our mesh so we can check out what's going on there. Uh, and then draw dust at the end. So the interesting thing we want to talk about is drawing the mask. So my function that I made, my main export here is takes in regal and I create the geometry here. Um, and export that out, and I create a draw mask function here, passing in regal and the mesh. So let's go to create job geometry. Now what's fun is this thing is fairly short. Uh, so just to go through a quick overview, we create a box, split the box in half, create some eye holes, adjust the nose shape, and then these little functions to do different steps. Uh, the best way to kind of dive through this is to return our mesh early so we can see what it looks like before we've defined everything. Now, <laughs> another creepy thing that's going on here is the um, mesh, my debug information is not being rotated while my uh, rest of it is. So I'm going to go in here and then turn off draw mask body. Um, so it's not going to draw the body, that won't get in our way. And if I can, I'll go here and turn my model into, let's just go ahead and do mat4.identity. So I'm just going to give it identity matrix rather than something which mat4 is probably not defined. Yep. So mat4 equals required, gl mat4. And there we go. Cool. So going back to create geometry, we're returning this mesh, and I've got this debug information here. And you can see I've labeled all, all the green things are the indexes of the cells for our mesh. So you can see here 0, um, 1 is probably at the bottom, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and that gives me a way I can start to control how I work with this mesh. So this mesh consists of positions, cells, and normals. So what we're interested in is working with the cells, which are defined as a quad, so it's the index of each position. You have four in indices. So you can see this first, this cell right here, three, this box right here, is cell index three. So if I do cell three, um, I can get access to that. And I've got my quad tool, which I can extrude with. And you can see here, here's the kind of syntax for extru extrusion. Uh, so let's take, eh, I think I remember that. So let's go back to where we were. So I'll do quad extrude. I'll take my first mesh as my pr first parameter, my third cell as the second, and then extruding I forget which is which, but if I extrude it out, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, let's say. Yeah. So I can extrude out with this, and uh, 0 0.5 is from the edge end. So if I do 0, 0.0, you can see that the box is essentially uh, not inset at all. And if I do 0 0.9, it's going to be inset quite a bit. So just to play around, just to show you like how quickly I can start to 
configure this. Uh, let's just do zero or zero point one, and then do this a few times. So you can see here now I've I've just extruded out this little chain of things. So I have these kind of extrusion tools to help me with how I do things. And I also have a splitting tool that I can use. So taking that same mesh three, um, I have split horizontal and I take the mesh and then the cell, if I remember correctly, which that broke, so I probably did not remember that correctly. Split, oh, split loop, that's what I want. Split loop, there we go. Um, and then this third parameter is set to false initially. Oh, maybe it's not. Oh, split loop. This next one is 0 0.5, which is the middle, and I can control the direction that it goes. So 0 0.25 will be on one edge, while 0 0.9 like would be on the other edge. Um, and then this fourth parameter is a Boolean, true or false, for which direction. So it defaults to false, and then if you set it to true, it'll go the other way. And you don't really have, it's kind of arbitrary, so I don't, I just have it as a Boolean flag that you can flip, um, depending on how you've oriented your quads. Um, and I can do this multiple times. What's cool is I can split something and then extrude out different ways. Okay, so those are some of the tools I'm working with. So the first thing I do is create a center ring. So I'm moving this return mesh, so I return it through my steps. And I've just created two of these um, loops here, and then I create some eye holes. So that's a little bit more complicated. You can see I've inset a few times and then basically merged some geometry together. Um, so looking at this, create some eye holes. And you can see I've just def looked at my debug information, picked out the cells that I wanted, and then gave them all words that were easy to know what I was talking about. So left eye front, left eye back. Um, first step is inset all the eye pieces. I extrude the front of the eyes inwards, I believe. Oh, I don't, I don't move them. And then for each of those, I move them half the diameter in, and I take out some of the cells, then I merge the position. So basically I just do what I need to do to create the eye holes there. Um, and when I'm writing this, I don't necessarily write it in this order. It's just as I go through and see how I, how I want to adjust things. This is the nose shape, so you can see it's taking on more of a mask appearance here. And again, I have all the debug information, so I know exactly how to manipulate different pieces of it. Um, shape the eyes. Let's make them mean and scary. And here, I've just gotten a list of those specific positions. And I go through each of them and take my mesh, access the positions, and the X and Y, and I'm moving them by some math. Shape mask back. These are going to be a little bit more boring because I'm just adjusting the look of it. And I probably did them after I built everything. Now, refine eyes is the first step where it gets kind of more realistic looking. Um, and I'm doing some funny things here. So let's dive into that. Uh, okay, so my first step here is this doesn't return anything, so let's just go ahead and return. My first step is to subdivide. So you see the difference between those two. And what I do is I take this first, let's see here, what are these? The tuple of the cell index and the opposite. So opposite is whether I flip it, it's just kind of arbitrary, whether I flip it one direction or the other. Um, and then cell index is the index of the cell I want to operate upon. So basically I'm doing this twice and I just created a list with the two definitions so I didn't have to repeat my code and it's just kind of terse. Maybe a little weird looking but eh. Uh, and here let's go ahead and look at what we're doing. So we're insetting a loop. You're not going to be able to see this very easily. It's going to be this tiny tiny line right here I believe that you're going to see. And what I'm doing is since I'm inserting a loop right next to an, another loop is on the subdivision 
instead of having like smooth angles, it ends up making sharper angles when they subdivide. So I'm, I'm just trying to define the rim of the eyes a little bit more. Uh, and here, I have quad.getNewGeometry, which is a function which, when I operate upon this mesh, I can do whatever I want inside this callback. And then afterwards, any new geometry that get, gets added, I can save as a list right here. So with my mesh, I want to get any new positions that are created within this callback. And this gives me a ring, which I do things with. Uh, and here, I'm insetting some more loops. So basically, subdividing like a little section in there. Um, and again, you shouldn't see much. It's just these tiny little extra rows along here. Um, and then the last one, I honestly don't even remember. So it's probably doing something to shape the eyes that looked fine when I was subdividing everything. <laughs> It's magic, I don't know. And then a little bit more of shaping the nose. And then the final one is kind of fun, is the extrude hair. So you can see how this is creating that kind of fun shape around the edge. And the way that one looks is I'm just creating these magic numbers and I'm looking at my debug information and going through. So here if I just return my mesh Oh, this I'm, this I'm just adjusting the positions so that the hair extrudes in a nice shape. Uh, so very manual, kind of something like you do in a, in a modeling application. And then I update the normals after I've done that so my calculations happen correctly. And then, again, this is just, this all this stuff right here is just splitting the loops is just making sure I have enough loops everywhere to extrude the hair from. Um, then this is a pseudo random number generator, which I create from a seed, a fixed seed of 11, uh, which I'll, I'll change that in a second. But um, I go through, I take my cells, I get a loop from the cells, um, starting from cell zero. So this one is a I'm basically trying to select the loop of cells here along the top, this top edge of this loop that you can go through. I'm trying to select all of those. And I want to filter them to only the unique set of um, cells and then filter them based on if the position of all of them is greater than this arbitrary number, which is only selects the, the hair on top, not the hair down below, basically. And then here's where the extruding happens. And I have a function called extrude and rotate cell. So extrude and rotate cell, I can do it multiple times, um, which just, I think, it, it extrudes it a little bit and then rotates it, then extrudes it again and rotates it. Um, and it does it randomly. So quad extrude the mesh, that particular cell, inset it 0 0.5, so inset it and then move it out by 0 0.025. So another magic number embedded in there. And range is the range of rotation. So that's a in radians. So 0 0.4, I think is just some value I plugged in. Again, a magic number. And then rotate A and B are the two ranges. And then for the cell, I take the cell index and then go into the mesh, get the positions, and then load then look up that, that index that the cell is pointing to, and that's my position. And then using some this library, I can rotate it on the z-axis and the y-axis. And I'm at I'm position two, so that's the, um, I'm moving it backwards every time. So the hair, instead of going straight up, it moves backwards as it kind of comes out. Uh, and I do this multiple times. So let's step through what that looks like. Turn mesh. So there's that first row. Actually, let's, let's just do the first extrude and rotate. And then the second extrude creates these tiny little extrusions on there. Um, 
And when you subdivide, when things are close, they tend to have sharper angles on there. So I'm just trying to make it look like kind of jagged as they go through to give it a kind of different appearance. And we'll go ahead and return that full mesh there so we can see all the hair that comes out like that. Now, speaking of magic numbers, here's this 11. If I set it to zero, this redoes the seed, and each time the hair generates in a different position the same way. So I can tweak that and find a number where, like, right here is kind of ugly. They're intersecting each other, so maybe I can iterate enough and get to 11 um, to where they're not overlaying each other, which they still look like they are. So, I don't know, maybe it looked great at some time, but it's good enough. Uh, cool, so what else would we look at? So the final step is to subdivide one last time. And my debug information goes away because it's, it's set to an arbitrary limit. So I don't overload everything. And it went over that arbitrary limit, which is nice for whenever I'm debugging and working on things. Because generally, the highest refinement level, I have way too many um, polygons to mess with refining it anymore. So that's the basic of my quad generation tool. And that's, that tool is quads on NPM uh, to do all that. And I'm still working on it um, at the point of this recording of the video and kind of refining it. But it's nice because you can take the tools that you use in um, like a 3D modeling program and in WebGL programmatically put something together. So this is, these are like the same steps for most of this mask for how I would generate something using a modeling application. But instead, I can do interesting things where, for instance, a lot, this hair right here, I can do programmatically. Um, so even though it's, it's a little tedious to manually type in num like these magic numbers to get access to specific things. Um, but then, if you watch my video on generating antlers, you can do the, like, these interesting algorithmic things. And that's kind of where I want to push it. So I want to get my tools strong enough to where I can have really strong modeling tools so I can just create a mesh and do it like I would in a, in a modeling application, but then switch over to something algorithmic and do something interesting. So yeah, that's, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video.